Hey guys, Vince the Engineer here. Today we've got some investigating to do, as you can see behind me. Not sure if it's fungus or if it's a bug problem. So we're going to do some tests and figure it out. Stay tuned. So I have a bit of a problem area in my yard that I'm a bit puzzled about. In this video, I'm going to investigate a few things which include bugs, fungus, and heat stress and develop a course of action to move forward with. The brown spots on the yard showed up fairly recently, within the past week or so. My gut is saying that most of this browning is due to fungus, but I want to investigate further to rule out other issues. This area of the lawn is located on the side of my house and gets full morning sun up until around 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. That's when the sun crosses over my house and the shadow over the home is cast over the yard for the remainder of the afternoon. I've been watering every other day with my impact sprinkler setup, allowing things to dry in between waterings. After investigating my sprinkler setup, I see a lot of overlap between the four impact sprinklers I have on that side of the house. Each head runs for about 20 minutes, so I estimate that the area that is browning is getting too much water, probably around 60 to even maybe 80 minutes. I think one action item will be to adjust the sprinklers and limit the overlap. I recently did a video on heat stress. In that video, I talk about how hot and dry it's been this summer. I'll leave a card at the top so you can go check that out. Since I know that this area is getting plenty of water, and that there's plenty of afternoon shade when it's hotter during the day, I'm ruling out heat stress in this area. But like I said, let's test for a few other things before planning a path forward. So the first test I'm performing is one that's typically used for chinch bug. Now chinch bugs are usually more of an issue in southern warm season turf lawns. However, I do know some cool season folks who have had chinch bug issues. So we'll do a quick check. It's super simple. For this, you'll need a cylinder of some sort that is open on both ends. This can be a coffee can or a bucket like I have here. Something wide like three to four inches would be adequate. You want to press the test cylinder into the ground so that it creates a seal and can hold water. Next, we fill the cylinder with water to try and keep the water level above the grass blades for a few minutes, like five to 10 minutes. This will force any bugs to float to the top. As you can see here, we have two bugs that have floated to the top. I'm not exactly sure what kind of bug this is. If you know, please leave a comment below. It's definitely not a chinch bug though. After testing a few more areas, I'm pretty sure I don't have a chinch bug problem. Some of the other common bugs that are known for turf damage are grubs, sod webworm, army worms, and cutworms. Let's test for grubs next. To do this, I'm using my Pro Plugger and taking a six inch core in several locations of the damaged area and neighboring good turf areas. When I pull the core, I'm pulling it apart, looking for what looks like shrimp. I'm also looking down the hole I dug to check for any grubs. Another thing you can do is tug at the grass. Grubs eat grass roots. If you have a grub problem, the grass will pull up with little to no effort and can even be rolled up like carpet. It does not appear to be a grub problem either. I did apply a preventative back in late May, so I should be covered but I have been seeing a lot of beetle activity in the area. And for those who don't know, grubs are the larva of beetles. So I'll continue to monitor the situation before taking corrective action on this. Sod webworm, army worms, and cutworms are all larva of different types of moths. Now a telltale sign that you have an issue with these pests is that you'll see moths kick up either as you're walking over the yard or mowing the grass. I have seen a few moths in the yard and can recount a handful of occurrences where I've kicked up moths while mowing the yard, although not specifically in this problem area. When it comes to developing an action plan, I'm taking everything into consideration. When dealing with fungus, I'll start bagging my clippings and wash my equipment after mowing to prevent spread. I'll also apply a fungicide. Typically with fungus, you want to encourage growth. This can be done by mowing more frequently or adding some fertilizer. Since we are in the heat of summer, I want to limit how much fertilizer I'm using. For now, I'm going to use a biostimulant that has 1% nitrogen and some really good micronutrients. I may also add a granular fertilizer at a reduced rate so that I don't stress out the lawn too much in this heat. I'm gonna hold off on treating for grubs since I already put down a preventative a few months ago. 
but I'm going to keep monitoring the situation and periodically poke around and check for them. However, I do think that seeing moths may be an issue, so to be proactive, I'm going to treat the lawn with a pesticide that targets those pests in an effort to be proactive. So there you have it. I'll be posting videos of the action plan applications we just discussed, so make sure you are subscribed to be notified and follow along. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Thank you for joining, and I'll see you soon.